Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Kieran's already put his name dropped me a few times, so I've got a little bit of an idea about uh, where I come from and, and what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to run through actually fairly quickly because I'm very much mindful of the time that uh, we have some friends in China. Um, who are going. So we look at the structure and elements of. What is it? Right. No, just the right click on the bottom right corner. Forward slide on the right hand. Okay. Thanks very much, Kieran. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the structure elements of CTQI is broken down into um, four parts. So we have the KPIs and master tables um, for performance evaluation, master tables for external factors, master tables for internal factors, and the management system. Okay. Now the first, the first, and most important element of it all is that looking to. Uh, develop and implement um, the internal quality system must have or implement a management system. So if it's ISO 9000, whichever one of those it is, or it can develop one specifically for uh, monitoring and implementing the, uh, the CTQS. Now if we uh, just have a look down here, we have the uh, container terminal performance measures, which um, Gustav has already mentioned. And we're going to take a brief look through those on the KPIs and the master tables, which are the performance measures. So a brief look to the next one. So, as I already said, the management system is mandatory. Then there are internal factors out of which you can score a maximum of 100 points. Um, external factors, maximum of 100 points, but external factors are not included in the final certification because, largely speaking, when you talk to get around a terminal uh, perspective, they are outside the control of the container terminal itself. Um, and then we have the performance evaluation, where, which is the, the key performance indicators where you can score a maximum of 100 points. They measure the real performance of the table, uh, of the terminal, uh, and demonstrate that you are keeping your promise to your, your customers with, with regards to uh, delivering quality services um, to them. So, next one. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. So now, within the, um, the CTQI uh, and the CTQS, in fact, we clearly define 80 uh, container terminal performance measures. Um, these are based on common metrics. Okay, so the definition is common. Um, worked out with the stakeholders that Kieran already showed us and uh, which uh, Gustav described briefly. Um, this is the key. We're all talking about when we say gross crane productivity, we have a definition for gross crane productivity in the standard, and that is applied at terminal A, terminal B, terminal C, terminal D, and so on, okay? Um, so we all know, when we say gross crane productivity, exactly what we're talking about. Mm. Um, so they're all calculated, all these uh, CTPMs are calculated over a reference period of, of 365 days. Now, if we have an established terminal with, a, with an existing legacy, we can look back over the, the, the past year, and we can calculate. We can put the, uh, the calculations in with the metrics and measure the performance over the past 365 days. If you've decided to go for full certification, that's what the audit is going to look at. If we're in, if we're implementing it as a system first, a, a continuous improvement system first, um, we can actually, you know. It start implementing it day one and take reference periods of three months, six months, one year, whatever, and then you take your through your internal audit, you build your gap analysis, so you you, uh, you you build your balance scorecard, you draw up a gap analysis, you go through it, you pick up the low low hanging fruit, you've got a to-do list for the next three months, six months, one year to improve performance, and you come back to it again in, after the reference period of 365 years. And the way we're looking at it uh, as, as the Global Institute, is that what we found with Comanche Galois is that the CTQI proves that you deliver quality to a minimum, yeah. to a certain minimum standard, which everybody understands what that is because it's clearly defined within the standard, it's publicly, uh, publicly known. Um, what we found over the last several years, with, um, particularly with HALA, certifying then recertifying and recertifying again, because we now have a case study and we have 
documented evidence that it improves the performance of the terminal and that they are actually more efficient now than they were before they implemented the system. Uh, and that year on year, their performance is improving. They are becoming more efficient. They get a better return for their investment. The port authorities are getting a better reputation because for a lot of port authorities, um, the, their customers, only experience of that port will be the container terminal. If they're sat outside the container terminal waiting for three days for a berth, they get nine moves an hour while they're alongside the berth, the port, might, port authority might be doing a brilliant job. But if they get a bad rap from a port container terminal performance, then the port itself gets a bad rap and cargo goes elsewhere, it goes where it's better served. So not only does the terminal get a return on its investment, but the port itself gets a chance to improve its reputation through partnership with container terminal. So if we look, at, look here at a couple of the performance measures, we've got some examples where we look at you know, the physical things. Gustav was saying that we, we, we were dodging about whether we would be able to build a, 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 a common set of KPIs um, because all terminals are different. This is true, but all terminals are the same as well. At the end of the day, we are, you know, at the end, we are all trying to do the same thing. We are, our job is to bring the ships in, get them alongside the quay, get the boxes off, into the yard, out of the gate, and vice versa. Get the boxes into the gate, on the yard, onto the ship, as efficiently, as quickly, with as little damage, and as few accidents as possible. And we're all trying to do it. In the end, the terminal is a block of land with a berth and some cranes and we're trying to do the same thing. What we've built up over the years is different legacies. We've built up different <coughs> labour legacies, we've built up different methods, different ways of managing the traffic and so on. But our key things that we do can be measured and you can have common metrics and you can compare this with this. The common metric will tell the same truth. Shipping lines have an advantage and they can compare one terminal in one part of the world. It works not just in Europe, we've seen it in the South in, in South America, um, both East and West Coast, and in Central America. Uh, we're seeing it down in Africa. So this is something that works not just here in Europe, but in the Americas, in Africa, and in Asia, where we're seeing some of the ports who a copy of the standard, and I'm absolutely certain that they're using it internally, but they have decided not to certify. They're using it as, a, as an improvement system. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I'm a terminal ops guy. I like to see terminals improving. Um, <laughs> it's, it's one of my jobs as a consultant is to do training and mentoring of operation staff. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm coming at with it. So we look at things, yeah, the physical things, number of vessel calls, number of barge calls, if you have barge, yeah, hinterland modal split. So how much goes by barge, how much goes by rail, how much goes by road, how much goes by feeder vessel to other, to other ports in your region. And then how much of the traffic is import, export, dwell time. All those sort of physical things that are common to every terminal. We all have these things. Then we look at productivity, which is affected by you know, a number of different issues. So we look at the terminal area, so productivity over the entire terminal area. And the and, and factors taken into account in the, the age of the equipment because that has an impact on your productivity, on your maintenance, on your safety all those sort of things, they're, they're, they're weighted in different ways within the standard. We look at the, so we calculate the berth working index using the number of vessels over a certain size divided by the length of the berth and the amount of space they take up. Um, we look at ship productivity, which is clearly defined with you know, the, the, the uh, number of cranes, the, the number of moves it does, uh, and the, from the first box off to the last box on, or the first move off, whichever, because you can, yeah. Let's, let's, let's face it, if we're, if we're short of space in the yard, we'll start with load if we've got the space on board the ship. Okay, so it's not necessarily first box off, last box on, but it's first move to last move. Yeah. Um, the road service quality index, so we're looking at how fast, how efficiently we service uh, traffic coming in through the, through the uh, gates by road. <coughs> if we move on swiftly. Okay. Yeah, the first 16. So the, uh, the first 16 here, so I look at uh, sea-to-shore interface, 
and uh, on, on import, export, transshipment, transit, full, empties, non-containerized units, and, and then the total 